Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 2 Resurrected Druid Leveling Guide. This video will cover the gear and the skills that you'll want to go for while leveling up your Druid through Normal, Nightmare, and Hell difficulties. And by the end, you're going to have a level 75 Druid that's ready to move on to an endgame build and end game farming. This guide is brought to you in collaboration with Diablo 2 expert Tio, and you can reference his written guide on maxroll.gg, link in the description. This guide will follow the path of the elemental druid, starting off as a fire druid, but then later on respecking into a wind druid. So you've just created your druid, you've rushed out into the blood more, killed a few enemies, some zombies, some quill rats, You've leveled up. Where do you allocate your stat points and your skill point? Well, for attributes, we're putting everything into vitality until level 11. Very simple. For your skills, invest into Firestorm until you reach level 6. Firestorm becomes your main damage dealer starting at level 2. Whenever you cast it, try to aim it to hit as many enemies as possible. Then, as you're playing, going around killing monsters, pick up every druid pelt you find and check them. You're looking to find plus to skills on him, especially plus to Fissure or plus to Tornado. If you eventually find a two socket pelt with plus to Tornado, then this will be your perfect base for a lore rune word that you'll create later on. But basically keep up to three white non-magic druid pelts for the chance of getting plus to skills from the imbue quest you're going to get from Charcy later on in Act 1. Then at level 6 and level 7, you're going to put your skill points into Molten Boulder. As soon as you unlock Molten Boulder, start using that as your main attack. Now there's some finicky behavior. Some monsters cause a boulder to explode when they get hit. So against them, use Firestorm. Then once you reach the Black Marsh, find the Waypoint and then start farming the Countess. To do that, find the Forgotten Tower in this zone. Go all the way down to the final level. Kill the Countess, pick up her drops and exit game, and repeat. Every time you kill her, you're going to get runes, and keep doing this until you acquire all the following runes. One Tal rune, one Eth rune, one Tear rune, and one Ral rune. Keep these runes in your stash for later use. And at the start of every Countess run, check Charcy while you're in town. You're looking for non-magic body armor with two sockets and non-magic helmets with two sockets. You're going to use these as bases for rune words later on. Also check Akara for a non-magic two socket staff. Same reason. Then from levels 8 to 11, put your points in Firestorm again. Because Molten Boulder is strong enough once you have two points in it, so there's no need to further invest. Your main skill still is Molten Boulder. Then at level 12 and 13, Put your skill points into Fissure, and put your attribute points into Strength. At this point, you're using Fissure as your main attack, and if you run into enemies who are immune to fire, then you can use Molten Boulder, since half of Molten Boulder's damage is physical. Then, once you reach Act 2, buy a belt from Farah in town. This will allow you to hold more potions. From level 14 until 26, continue to put all your skill points into Fissure. But then if you ever have extra skill points and Fissure is maxed, put those into Firestorm instead. While Fissure remains your primary attack skill, you may struggle to use it in some areas like the Maggot Lair or Arcane Sanctuary with tight, narrow passages. This is a big AoE skill. It can't shine in these areas. So in these cases, you can use Firestorm against weak enemies and Molten Boulder against stronger ones. As for your attribute points, everything into Vitality until level 22. Then at level 17, create the Stealth Rune Word in a two-socket box. Body armor. If you've not yet found a non-magic two-socket body armor, check Charcy and Geed in Act 1. If they don't have any, refresh their inventory by leaving town and returning and keep checking them until you get it. Insert the runes Tal and Eth in that order into the armor to get a piece of gear that you're going to keep all the way up to hell difficulty. This is the stealth rune word. It gives you faster run walk speed, faster cast rate, faster hit recovery, some mana regen, and more. At level 19, create the leaf rune word in a two socket non-magic staff. If you haven't found one yet, keep visiting Akara, refreshing your inventory as necessary until you do. Then insert the tier and Ral runes into the staff, and you're going to now get a rune word that's going to give you plus three to fire skills. Note that while it seems like this is just for sorceresses, it is not. Any class that uses fire skills can benefit, including you as a druid with your fire skills. Then once you reach Act 4, go back to Act 2 and hire a mercenary, whichever one you prefer. Then buy a pike from Halbu in Act 4 and equip your mercenary with that pike. He's going to help you get past the two monsters that are immune to fire that you're going to have to face in Acts 4 and 5. Once you reach level 20, go to Act 3 and shop for a Staff of Teleportation at Ormus. 
This staff contains charges of the sorceress's teleport skill, which is the best mobility skill of the game, maybe of any game ever. It allows you to teleport past physical barriers, and although you will only be able to use the staff once you're level 24, the reason you want to shop for it before you're level 24 is because it's actually easier to spot at a glance in the vendor's shop. Its background is going to be red because we can't use it, so you just have to look at the red staffs. Then after you've bought it and you keep leveling up, as soon as you can wield it, pop it into your weapon swap. Whenever you need to teleport, swap to the staff, teleport, then swap back to your regular weapons. Also, shop at Farah in Act 2 for a 3-socket non-magic shield, either a large shield or a kite shield. We're going to save that later for a rune word. Once you get to Act 5, save the quest reward for the first quest, which lets you add sockets to an item. You're going to need this soon enough. Once you finish Act 5's second quest, you're going to be given the runes Ral, Ort, and Tal. Insert them in that order into that three socket shield you have. This creates the Ancient's Pledge rune word. This gives a huge amount of resistance, but you're not going to be equipping it yet until you've crafted your Spirit rune word weapon. Remember, right now you're using a Leaf rune word. That's a really strong option. You don't want to give it up just for more defense. Then once you get access to the Secret Cow level by completing normal difficulty, you're then going to farm the Secret Cow level until you get a Crystal Sword to drop. This will be the base that you use for the powerful Spirit rune word. In order to access the Secret Cow level, you're going to grab Wurt's Leg in Tristram, which can be found by taking the waypoint to the Stony Fields in Act 1, finding the Cairn Stones again, going through the Red Portal, and going all the way to the left, to the west, clicking on Wurt's corpse, grabbing his leg. Then in town, you take his leg, you put it in the Haradric Cube, with a Tome of Town portal, you hit Transmute, and bam, you got yourself a portal to the Secret Cow level, which is a great place to farm XP and items. And you can repeat this process to run this level over and over and over until you get a Crystal Sword. It's not a waste of time, it's good XP in the meantime, and unlike in the past, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, you can kill the Cow King safely without locking yourself out of the Cow level. Now, once you've found your non-magic Crystal Sword, or... You could settle for a non-magic broadsword instead. Bring that sword to Larzuk in Act 5, normal, and use the quest reward to add sockets to it. Now, as long as this is a crystal sword taken from the cow level, and it lacks any magic properties, this will add exactly four sockets. But it must be from the cow level. If you got a crystal sword from elsewhere, then there's a high chance that it'll add three or five sockets instead, which would be disastrous. Then once you reach level 23, put two points into vitality, and then the rest into strength until you reach level 25. Your target strength by the time you reach level 26 is either 43 or 48. And the number depends entirely on what sword and shield you're using. You just need to meet the bare minimum for whichever sword and shield you put your rune words into. And then from level 27 onward, all your points go into vitality forever. For your skill points, continue to put them into Fissure until you've maxed out Fissure. Throw your additional skill points into Firestorm, and then once Fissure is maxed out, keep investing into Firestorm until you reach level 38. Because then it's going to be respect time. Now, as soon as you enter Nightmare Difficulty, you're going to want to shop for some items that'll help you out. So, look for gloves that grant resistance at Charcy, and a belt that adds resistance and or health, and boots that add faster run walk, and resistance. Once you transition into nightmare mode, your resistances all take a hit. They go down and you're going to need more resistances to stay alive. Once you reach the Countess again, now on nightmare difficulty, farm her until you acquire the following runes. One Tal rune, one Thal rune, two Ort runes, one Am rune, and one Soul rune. Then add the Tal, Thal, Ort, and Am runes in that order to build your spirit. That's into your sword. Spirit's gonna grant us plus two to all skills, up to 35% faster cast rate, a bunch of mana, and faster hit recovery. And we can keep using the spirit all the way into hell difficulty and beyond. This item is amazing. Now, obviously you're getting rid of your leaf, so now you equip your Ancient's Pledge for a big beefy amount of resistance. Then insert the Ort and Soul runes into a two socket non-magic helm. If you have a druid pelt now with two sockets and plus to tornado, then use that. Otherwise, any helmet will do. This creates the lore rune word, equip it. This gives you another plus one to all skills, 30% lightning resist and plus two to mana after each kill, which might not seem like a lot, but it's actually a lot more useful than you think. And that's another item you're gonna be able to keep until end game. Then once you reach level 38, put one point into volcano. 
At that point, you gotta measure when you're gonna do your respec. You wanna be at least level 38, but you need to respec before you reach Mephisto in Nightmare Act 3 because you will need to respec for that fight. So once you're ready to respec, you go to Akara in Act 1. You can go back to normal difficulty for this, and then you hit respec. This refunds all your skill points, all your stat points, and to reallocate them now, you're going to invest the minimum amount of strength needed to equip all your gear, and then you dump everything else into Vitality. And for the rest of your leveling journey, again, everything into Vitality now. For your skills, this is what your respec will look like if you are level 38. 15 points into Tornado, 9 points into Hurricane, and 14 points in Cyclone Armor. Then in the summoning skill tree, you want to put 1 point into Summon Grizzly all the way at the bottom. So just put 1 point into each prerequisite until you get that 1 point into Summon Grizzly. And from there on out, you're just going to max out these skills in the following order as you gain more skill points. First Tornado, then max out Hurricane, then max out Cyclone Armor. For the gameplay, keep your Cyclone Armor up at all times. This shields you from elemental damage. Whenever it drops, just recast it. Before you engage enemies, cast Hurricane. This is going to start up a big storm around you. And then, when fighting enemies, cast Tornado on them. And make sure you actually run close enough to enemies to envelop them in your Hurricane. Then use all of your summons as distractions as needed. Grizzly is the tankiest one, and he's the one you'll want to have active the most, especially if you're playing hardcore. Now, this build deals a lot of physical damage and a little bit of cold damage. So there aren't a lot of enemies you're going to run into that are going to be completely immune to you. However, if you're fighting an enemy that is immune to physical, it could take really long to beat them, so if you can skip them, skip them. When you're fighting the Ancients on Hell difficulty, you might have some trouble. They deal a lot of damage, and they're very mobile, and your tornadoes are really hard to aim, so it can be tricky actually dealing damage to them. So you're going to want to just run circles while casting tornado behind you, and use your summons to distract them. Now before we finish here, we're just going to explore some gear options that you may either luck yourself into finding, or maybe you found on other characters, or you've traded for, and these items will be useful to you on this character while leveling. So instead of a spirit sword, you can use a spectral shard for the faster cast rate, mana, and all resist. You can also use a suicide branch for its plus one to all skills, its faster cast rate, and all resistance. Instead of a stealth body armor, the skin of the Viper Magi is pretty much the best armor you can wear. Plus one to all skills, 30% faster cast rate, all resistance. Mage Fist Gauntlets grant plus one to fire skills, so useful before you respec. But even after you respec, 20% faster cast rate, which is always useful. If you get an amulet that grants plus to druid skills or plus to elemental skills, that's really powerful. An eye of etlich grants plus one to all skills, and Maras grants plus two to all skills as well as all resist. Great options. Hasuru's Iron Heal is a pretty common drop that gives faster run walk speed and fire resist. And Sander's Rip Wrap is another common drop with a huge amount of faster run walk on it. For rings, you want faster cast rate. And if possible, combine that with resistances. If you can get a Stone of Jordan that gives you plus one to all skills, that's even better. Now, if you're doing well on resistances and feel you can afford to drop your Ancient's Pledge, you can instead use a Lidless Wall Shield for its plus one to all skills and faster cast rate. You can also use a Splendor Rune Word using the F and Lum Runes. This will give plus one to all skills, 10% faster cast rate, and 20% magic find. For your helm, if you can get a Jalal's Mane, that's a terrific option. Plus 2 to Druid skills, 30% faster recovery, and plus 30 all resist. Alternatively, if you find a rare pelt that has more plus to skills that you use than you'd be getting from your lore, then you can replace your lore. Now lastly, you'll notice that we have not covered your mercenary. Mercenaries are close to impossible to consistently keep alive during the leveling process on any character. We're gonna have a separate video where we cover mid to late game mercenary options, their gearing, what's best for them. Stay tuned for that video because that's gonna wrap up this video. But we got leveling guides for other classes. We're gonna have videos on the best builds for patch 2.4. We're gonna have videos on how to farm all the best gear. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.